Well, welcome to Focus Today. I'm your host, Perry Atkinson, and today we have our good buddy Patrick Doyle back in the house. Uh, Patrick heads up Veritas Counseling. He's fresh home from a conference with Larry Crabb, and he probably would rather talk about that. But he's obligated to stick with the subject that we started last time he was here. And that was the role of marriage, and we first took on the man's role. Yeah. Today we're going to take on the woman's role. Yeah. So here's kind of the plan. We're going to spend the first segment probably offending everybody. <laughs> and then we're going to open up the phone lines. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to open up the phone lines and let you straighten us out. Okay, how's that? Is that a plan? Sure, let's do it. Well, first of all, tell us about Larry Crabb Conference. Um, well, he does he does two conferences. One is, and they're both seven days long, and you have to apply, you have to read some books, and you have to be accepted. So, because wow. one of the things that he does is he has a, one class that he calls School of Spiritual Direction, which is um, the first one. And so the reason why he has people sign up and, and do the writing and stuff is because what he doesn't want to do is have the time like uh, arguing with people. Oh. Either you agree with this or you don't. If you don't, that's fine. Mm. But if you're interested, then come and we'll, we'll... And so it's a lot of teaching. Oh, that's a great idea. A lot of we teaching. We have to do that at church meetings. <laughs> <laughs> See how to send out notices before church meeting. Now, if you agree with what we're going to talk about, you're welcome to come. If not, you're out of here. Yeah. So, if you're on board with sort of the principles and stuff he's doing, then you go to that class, and it's a real. Uh, it's again, each class is uh, the the SSD is only allowed thirty people. Wow. And then he breaks those those thirty people down into ten triads or ten groups of three, and so during the week. You spend time with those three people, and mm -hmm. you're practicing the things that he's talking about. So it's it's both informational and practical. And then the one I went to is called Next Step, and um, that's really more about um, developing the skills rather than learning about them. So it's it's a little more intense. And I I um, <laughs> it was one of the most intense weeks I've had in a long time. Oh, good. It's a good, intense in a good way. I uh, was. So is this, that the reason your rates went up? <laughs> <laughs> I, they haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But um, so it was very beneficial, and uh, anybody who's interested, I would. Um, and you know, he Larry's uh, really what he said was that he he doesn't really want to call it spiritual direction anymore because it feel, that sounds like too much of a thing. And he says, as, as the body of Christ, you know, you don't have to be qualified to have a conversation that matters. And that's yeah. what he's talking about, is that as brothers and sisters, we need to be having conversations that matter because they're spiritual in nature, not just on the surface. Well, uh, let me just say, uh, if you've never read any Larry Crabb's books, Google him, check yeah. him out. Yeah. A couple of books he's written are just really great. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one dealing with... Um, why bad things happen to good people. Uh, Shattered Dreams. Shattered Dreams. Yes. Uh, I found that book to be extremely <laughs> resourceful, yeah. not only to myself, but in counseling people. Yes, absolutely. So you may want to check that out. Yeah. All right, well, last time you are here, we talked about uh, the role of men in marriage. Today yes. we want to talk about the role of women. Mm -hmm. uh, I am surprised, uh, you're not, <laughs> but uh, I am surprised of um, how impacting this is to Christian marriages. Mm. It feels that it's sent, at least I sense there's a lot of phoniness in Christian marriages, and mm -hmm. you get it when mm -hmm. pe when it reaches a max point. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it even happens in ministry. Oh, absolutely. Um, in people who have seemingly a good front mm -hmm. out there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but um, is there? Well, how how would you enter into this delicate, sensitive <laughs> topic? of the well, woman's role uh, in marriage. Okay, so let's just recap a little bit, and I'll, I'll talk about an overarching principle that I'd like to help people see. And um, so I strongly believe that from a biblical role, from a biblical place, the role of men and women has the gender roles, you know, men and women, don't have to do with the culturalized version. It's not about, you know, is a man strong and is he, you know, the, you know no. is he able to, you know, go to war and mm. is a woman pretty and those sort of gender roles that we've developed culturally are part of the problem. And so, and I get this straight from uh, Dr. Crabb's book, uh, Fully Alive. This is something that he's developed based on his study of scripture, which I found to be very enlightening. So he says that he sees that the the just the if you take the act of sex in a marriage, okay, which God created and it's good in the in the context of marriage. If you look at this, the physical act of sexual intercourse, you have a man moving into a woman, and a woman being open and receiving. And what he's saying is, when you look at the biblical language, what you see is that is a reflection, a shadow of how the two are supposed to interact. 
so emotionally. As, emotionally and spiritually. Mm -hmm. So as men, we're to move toward and into our wives. Now, think about this for ladies. If, a, if your husband moved towards you emotionally, instead of when a, when a woman's having a difficulty or she's upset or she's having a hard time, if your husband moves into that in a way that's loving and supportive and kind, not agenda-driven, not trying to shut you down, not trying to make his own way happen, but he really moves into you, as did Christ, move into the mess of struggling humanity. Mm -hmm. So what we do as men is we reflect the nature of God, which is full of initiative, which is full of help, okay? So the woman's role, based on this, to be open and receiving. What's the joke by, based on most comedians that you hear about women and the negative side of who they are? It's always about the nagging. Mm -hmm. It's always about the controlling. Right. <clears throat> In a lot of movies, um, there's, uh, <laughs> if you ever read the book, The Great Divorce, by C.S. Lewis, it, when when oh. when the um, when when they're, when one of the one of the shadow people that's talking to the to the solid people is uh, is a woman who's been controlling her husband and her his whole life, and the and the whole scene there is hilarious. But it's really about this woman saying, "I'm going to control him, and I'm going to make something out of him," and I'm, and it's a very stereotypical controlling woman scene. Okay, but that is not how God designed it. I don't believe women are at their best at all when they're in a controlling environment or when they're trying to control or when they're nagging, okay? But I do think that it's a response to feeling uninitiated towards, mm -hmm. okay? Now, in, in this situation, barring any sort of deep level pathology, okay, mm -hmm. where somebody's really damaged right. from trauma or they've been abused or something, I mean, that'll, that'll create some dynamics that are different. But if we're talking about just people who are struggling relationally, who are relatively unharmed in that way, so the way I look at it is this, a woman's role is to be open and receiving. Now, to reveal the nature of who God is, <clears throat> God's responsive nature, how he responds to us, he's open to us, mm -hmm. which is a, a mind blower, right? So if a woman is open and receiving, she stands on the other side of the bridge, if you will, open, and, and the husband initiates toward her, and then she responds, then you have what I would say is real spiritual intimacy, right? But there's all kinds of things that get in the way of that. You know, there's a guy who has tried to come towards his wife a couple of times and she shut him down, whether she knew it or not. And then he gets hurt and doesn't want to do it anymore and doesn't want to take that risk. Right. Mm -hmm. Or she's, you know, tried to get him to, you know, come toward her and he won't. And then she gets hurt and resentful and she chases and nags and, and becomes uh, um, mm -hmm. embittered. Mm -hmm. Right. So one of the things that <clears throat> I see a lot is that women because they have a, this is something else I think is important to understand. God made women to be nurturers. They, by their very nature, are wanting to make things good. They want things to go well. They want their children to be well cared for. They want their husband to be well cared for. And so that nurturing nature, apart from faith, can become controlling. So here's what happens. My, my desire is for it to go well. So that makes a woman more interested in the outcome than, than, than the average man. Men can like put that away. They don't really think about that. They can compartmentalize it, but women are nurturers, so they wanna know. So what happens, they get focused on the outcome. <clears throat> how, many, how many outcomes have you been able to control? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of like the Oregon Health Plan, zero. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what happens if, if, I, if, I, if I'm unable to control the outcome, but I want it really badly, which is a good desire, mm. and I've said this many times before, I think we're, as men, we have a propensity towards visual sin, i.e. pornography, lust, mm. right? I think the, what I call a, a woman pornography is scenario building. So something happens because they're nurturers, they, they're concerned about the outcome. So the, the, the bottom line of it is a, is a good intent. But what happens is, is that when we take that control factor onto ourselves, then we become pushy, we become manipulative, we start to angle. And see, I think a lot of times this is what happens. A woman wants a good outcome, the man sort of shut down, and then a woman moves into sort of a, a management mode where she's trying to get things to happen. And what I'm saying is, as a woman, that is not going to reflect the nature of God. And uh, so for a woman to be able to endure that, Perry, 
she's going to have to have an intimacy with God that will sustain her so that she can let go of the outcome. And when that happens, a lot of tension in the relationship will dissipate. All right. I, I, you hit a big one here, <clears throat> and that's the whole issue of outcomes because yes. I think unintentionally, perhaps, yeah. most women will do something with mm-hmm. an expectation mm-hmm. of this happening. Mm-hmm. Right. And when it doesn't happen, their response back is very personal mm-hmm. as rejection. Yes. Um, and mm-hmm. that's a cycle. <sighs> and then you, build, then you build into resentment. So You can, yeah. And, and so then yeah. when you have resentment, how open and receiving are you? Well, none. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but very little. And, and most guys can figure that out. And the other th- on the other side, I believe most guys deal with inadequacy. Whether they'll tell you that or not, most, what, do mean, what do you mean by that? Most guys are feeling inadequate anyway. Oh, to 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 respond to a woman? Yeah, they're feeling in, inadequate. I've blown it, and my wife's, you know, I'm too yeah. this, and I haven't done that. And <clears throat> we stack up offenses because we don't deal with them. Mm-hmm. In the biblical world, We when, when we sin, we confess, okay? And I've said this many times. Um, you know, the Scripture says that confession, you, you, we confess our sins one to another so that we might be he judged and beat up and kicked to the curb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that verse. I keep forgetting. No. <laughs> yeah. We confess our sins one to another so that we might be healed, right? right? So confession is what leads to healing, not good behavior. Right. But even in the church, a lot of times, I see a lot of impetus put on good behavior. But if you and I are in a relationship or I'm in a relationship with my wife and I'm doing good behavior, she's going to see through that. Yeah. I would see through that. So here's what happens. As a man, if I move towards my wife in confession, I will then encourage her response. This is why I've often said it always goes faster when when men start the confession. It's just how God made it. We're the leaders. So if we lead in that direction, they'll follow. All right, let me take a quick break here. And by the way, if you want to join us, uh, you're more than welcome. If you want to remain anonymous, we'll certainly respect that. Uh, The phone number is 776-5368, 776-5368. That's in and around the immediate Medford area. Outside, everything's toll free, 1-800-373-5368. We welcome your comments. And again, you don't have to give your name if that's uh, uncomfortable for you. So let us know. Patrick, share the whole hour. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paulina and I work at the Dove TV. Did you know that when you support the Dove TV, you have a profound impact, not only in our community, but around the world? It's your continued support that takes the inspiration and hope in the programs we produce and makes them available to the thousands of people who are watching these videos online every week. Help bring encouragement and hope to our valley and beyond by making a secure online donation today at our website, thedove.us. Okay, we're back, and uh, Patrick Doyle's here with us today from Veritas Counseling, and we're talking about the woman's role in marriage. Now, this is a huge topic. No way we're going to cover it in an hour, but I think we can give you some nuggets uh, Mm -hmm. to take along with you uh, throughout Mm -hmm. your journey and whatever you may be struggling with. If you'd like to join the conversation with a question or comment, you're welcome to do that. Uh, The local phone number is 541-776-5368. And if you're outside the immediate area, up and down the Oregon coast, Northern California, over in Klamath Basin, or maybe you're watching on Roku in another state, you're more than welcome to join us. Toll free, 1-800-373-5368. All right, now, part of this, uh, I think you make an an incredible uh, illustration of the woman open to the man uh, in all areas, uh, in the intimacy, into emotions and everything else. Right. What happens when there is distrust, Mm. Uh, whether the man made a mistake or Mm -hmm. told a lie, or even the woman? I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, today's pressure, things happen, Mm -hmm. your life's full of counseling like that. Yes, yes. And when that trust factor is broken, Mm -hmm. um, everybody thinks, well, I'll just box a candy and a dozen roses takes care of that problem, (laughs) right? As long as it's accompanied by a confession. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm a dog on a bone with that stuff. Uh, Okay, yeah. Uh, So, you know, I think that, you know, if we're we're looking at the role of a woman, so what I see happen all the time is that, so a man has some level of um, awareness that there's a problem. You know, he might be really aware, he might be barely aware, but he has some level of awareness of a problem. So 
<clears throat> I think for a woman, part of being open <clears throat> is to tell the truth in love. Mm -hmm. And I see this a lot of times. Um, women are afraid. They don't want to get a reaction. They don't want to shut them down more. They, there's all kinds of difficulty. But, but here's one of the things that, that I say about either a man or a woman in a marriage. Listen, the first thing is neither one of you have what it takes to love the other person on your own. If you don't get some love from God, if you don't get some in inspiration from God, if you don't get some help from Him, if you don't get your value at a core level from Him, you're going to be trying to suck something out of that relationship that it'll never give you. I don't care how great the other person is. Wow. Um, <laughs> and this I is, think you could put a period there and let it settle. <laughs> yes, because it comes down, to how are you and God getting along? <laughs> it, well, yeah. <clears throat> and so what I see over and over again in marriage is that subtly the, the desire becomes for the other person to s fulfill me. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not possible. No person is going to fulfill you. And so a lot of us have to come to the, <clears throat> the grievous, dangerous, you know, painful reality that, oh, they're not going to fulfill me. And I think our culture, even our church culture, pushes that to the forefront. What In a good relationship, your life goes well. All right, I want to I take some calls. Let me just okay. ask you a quick. Okay. When, when a woman does something and expecting this outcome. Yes. And most of those outcomes are self-fulfilling. Yeah. Is that selfishness? Um, yeah, ultimately, because what you're doing is you're trying to control the outcome, and that is the opposite of being faithful or dependent on God. So, all right. So a lot the question has to be asked, can you do something and don't expect an outcome? Just do it because it's in your heart to do it. Only if you have an intimacy, I think, at a level with God that allows you to let go of the outcome and trust Him. All right. Let's go to the phones real quick. Hi, Rain. Uh, you're on the air with uh, Patrick. Go ahead. I was um, reflecting on this issue the other day, um, that being the role of the, the wife and the role of the husband. Is there something, a parallel to be drawn as, as men as we look at our roles in relationship with Christ, um, is that maybe more similar to the role of, of the wife as, as we are the bride? Um, is, is it not our role to also be submitted as a wife would be submitted to her husband? Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> I've said it many times before that if you don't have the, uh, a, a satisfying intimacy with God yourself, in other words, you're receiving a love that you don't have, you're not going to have enough to give your spouse. So I don't think that we and of ourselves have enough without it being given to us by God. And then we share that rather than us trying to get it from them or provide it for them, which takes away a lot of those manipulative, selfish, unhealthy motives. And, and we reflect God in a way that he comes to us with needing nothing. Mm, and so that, that brings a lot of freedom because we're not trying to get. And when, you know, I don't care how, how hard we try, if we want something, it, 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 it influences our motive and it influences our way of doing it. Interesting. Thanks, Wayne. It's a good observation, Wayne. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. Good observation. All right. Um, I get these mini counseling session questions in uh -huh. between buying a pair of shoes and the cash <laughs> register, you know. <laughs> You bump into somebody. You probably get it too, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, I was uh -huh. at church the other day, and you know, between services, mm -hmm. wham, mm -hmm. and it kind of went on what we're talking about today. But here, here's one of the things I pulled away from it, and that is the the, the term impasse. When a couple yes. reaches an impasse, yes. In other words, the man is trying hard to mm -hmm. get her to open up, mm -hmm. but she is shut down, and no matter what he does, mm -hmm. it's coming on less than rejected mm -hmm. or no. Mm -hmm. And so it spirals. Yeah. You know, they both auger in, right. they're, they're stuck. And that's when maybe they call you. Right. I don't know. Or maybe so what they do call do? the lawyers. Yeah. What do you do? Well, <clears throat> without having specifics, it's hard to say. Yeah. But, but the first thing I would do is, is try to f see what really is going on. And this is the, something I've discovered over time. Is that generally, generally speaking, <clears throat> the first thing that someone presents to me in the office is not the issue. <laughs> I'm not laughing at anybody. Else. I get it. <laughs> it takes a half hour to get through to the bones, doesn't it? Well, well, or sometimes yeah. weeks or months. Yeah. Because you know it depends on the person's um, 
you know, their makeup, what's happened to them, how, how much trust they have. Yeah. And so <clears throat> once we discover what the issue is, but here's the key. I don't believe lasting change happens apart from real conviction. The, the scriptures say that godly sorrow mm -hmm. leads to repentance, but it also says that worldly sorrow leads to death. Mm -hmm. So is the person convicted? And that's the thing that I would want to see, the fruit of conviction, because that always leads to behavior change. Words. Anybody can do those. All right, let me. You said something there, and I want it, I want it to stick. <laughs> okay. Um, godly conviction leads to character change. Yeah. Get that? Godly conviction. If you're convicted by God, mm -hmm. you will change. Mm -hmm. If you're not convicted by God, mm -hmm. you're going to try everything to make it appear that you are. Right, exactly. And so most women that I've dealt with have enough sensitivity to sniff out. Truth. whether or not it's real. And so what happens is, I see this all the time. <clears throat> well, what about the man? I mean, can the man sniff out whether or not the woman's real? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But so what, ha what I hear is that, you know, well, he said he was sorry. But they don't believe him. Okay. And, or vice versa. The woman says she's sorry, but the guy doesn't believe her, right? Mm -hmm. So insincere confession doesn't change anything, but it does leave you with more resentment. Okay. And the other thing I've also noticed about godly uh, confession, you give up your right to win. <clears throat> well, yeah. Well, something that accompanies confession yeah. or repentance is what the Bible calls contriteness. Mm -hmm. And I say of contriteness, contriteness means I have no rights. Mm -hmm. So if I'm wrong, and here's, here's what I, I've talked about this many times before, but it, I don't in my family allow I'm sorry or I apologize. Because in the scriptures, what I see is that confession is always specific to the sin I'm convicted of. God is not, in general, convicting me. <laughs> He's very specific. <laughs> <laughs> and so if I go to somebody and say, oh, I'm sorry, for what? So as the offended, I need to know that you know what you did. Okay? And in a marriage, I'm sorry, honey. Okay, haha. <laughs> but nothing's actually healed. Mm. So we just build it up a little more, and then a little more, and then a little more, and then, you know, years down the line or whatever, you say, I'm sorry, and I'm instantly angry. And you're like, what? I said I was sorry. Right? Well, because we haven't dealt with anything. And I say this all the time. You know, I use this example a lot because it's the couple in the, your favorite breakfast restaurant <laughs> they, that are sitting there, yeah. they've been married 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, and they hate each other. They don't want to be there. They're angry. They don't talk. They don't look at each other. I mean, I'm thinking they could at least reminisce, but they didn't want to do that. <clears throat> but think about that couple. You know that that couple did not stand at the altar all those years before going, here's to hating you later, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they, they were like, this is going to be awesome. How'd you go from awesome to I hate you? I suggest that the way that happens is that year after year after year after year, you do not deal with the inevitable sin that will take place between two people. All right, we're talking about the role of the wife uh, in marriage today, and uh, you know we're very transparent about this. And we're not going to cover it in one hour, but we're right. try our best to leave some nuggets for you on the table. If you want to join us, you're more than welcome. The phone number is seven seven six five three six eight. That's the local number. Toll free if you're outside the immediate Medford area, up and down the coast, Northern California, over in the Klamath Basin, maybe you're watching on Roku in another state, love to hear from you. Toll free, 1-800-373-5368. And if you want to remain anonymous, we'll respect that as well. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dan and I work at the Dove TV. You know, compared to Portland, Seattle, and LA, Medford might be considered a small market, but at The Dove, we're excited about the opportunity to make a big impact right here in our community. And you help make that happen. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us now by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or by phoning 541-776-5368. Okay, we're back with uh, Patrick Doyle, and the subject today is the woman's role in marriage. And of course, uh, this is an extremely transparent time here. Yeah. And um, 
can be very sensitive. We understand that. Uh, if you want to join us, you're more than welcome to. The phone number is 776-5368. That's the local area uh, number, 541, area code 776-5368, or toll free, 1-800-373-5368. Um, I think that the, okay, I'm not sure how to ask, ask this question. <laughs> um, do you think with all of the age that we have today for marriage, yeah. especially in the Christian world, I mean, yeah. we have books and yep. tapes and yep. seminars. Yep. I mean, yep. we are loaded we with are. stuff. Yep. Okay. Is are we expecting too much out of this? I mean, at the, at the end of the day, as you say, two sinners got married. Yep. And they have to work it out. Mm -hmm. And there has to be an area of just kind of buck up, isn't there? Or isn't there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, don't, I mean that in a nice way. Yeah. I mean that in the sense that do you really have to throw everything on the table? Uh, in terms of... The, uh, How you feel and what's going on? And sometimes nothing says the best thing said. Sometimes, yeah. But you see, that's an issue of wisdom, though, Perry. And that wisdom comes from hearing the Spirit mm. in you. And I think sometimes we're so blinded by trying to get the outcome we want. We bypass that moment. Oh, we do. Oh, and boy, so, okay. and so that becomes a selfish endeavor mm -hmm. under the guise of spiritual intimacy. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, again. You know, for a woman to, to, to be in a marriage that's healthy, one of the things that her role is, is to be open and receiving and invitational, okay? If you're, if you're, if you're um, pushing, 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 is that going to be open and invitational? No, and I think from what I gather with men, and you get it a whole lot more new, they just get tired of it. They yeah. just get tired of, tr no matter what they try, mm -hmm it comes out wrong mm -hmm. and so you reach again the impasse mm -hmm. and uh, you live together out of the convenience of the children that yeah. you do for love of each other yeah i call it you know I, I i talk to people and i say oh you know i ask them how old their kids are and they tell me you know, i got a 16 year old and i got a 12 year old whatever and i'm like and i take the age of the youngest child yeah. and i say so it's what five six years till they graduate and yeah. so i look at the, i'm saying so, so you're on the six year plan <laughs> six year plan for six years till that youngest child graduates and then this thing's over yeah. we're just we're just hanging in there till the kids get through school well that's a terrible way to live yeah. who wants to live that way so what I'm saying is this <clears throat> none of us can come to the table and say our marriage doesn't have trouble yeah. none of us can say that we're living total bliss and you know everything's beautiful all the time and if you are living that way it's because you're in denial <laughs> <clears throat> well, then what's the hope? Well, the hope is we're going to have a profound intimacy that reflects who God is. Okay. Because this is the whole point of the thing, is to reveal God. The point of it isn't to be happy. Mm. <clears throat> That's one of the things I would say to both men and women. But for women to have the courage to be open and invitational, and by taking the risk, there's never a chance, there's never a time when you're open and invitational that you're not risking profound harm. So don't don't get me wrong, ladies. I, I know that that's real, okay? But who are you going to trust? You're going to trust the good response of your husband, or are you going to trust the God who saved you? Mm -hmm. And so what I want you to do is I want you to look just over your husband's head to the God of glory and put your hope there, not in the guy that's sitting across the table from you. If your hope's in him, you're in trouble. Okay. Because he's inadequate, and he was inadequate the day you married him, and okay, he'll that never be that doesn't make him inferior, but you're just putting no. it in spiritual perspective. In spiritual terms, yeah. and, and vice versa. Yeah. Guys, if you think your wife's going to bring you fulfillment, you're wrong. There's no fulfillment on a deep level in human relationships, even my children. And so if we start to look at someone as our fulfillment, what are we going to do to that relationship? Mm hmm we're going to destroy it because we're we're sucking our the will to live out of those people. All right. Now, outside influences. Outside influences. Okay, let's okay. deal with that a little bit. And okay. Again, if you want to join the conversation 776-5368 or toll free 1-800-373-5368. I know a lot of people who are in great marriages, mm -hmm. myself included. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but outside influences can eat away. Absolutely. Um, other things that are going on that you're connected to that aren't directly related to your marriage, but influence yeah. your marriage. Yeah. Whether it's kids, mm -hmm. uh, family issues, mm -hmm. uh, business issues, whatever. Yep. Yep. And um, my late father-in-law, he had a saying that was pretty interesting. Um, he said, no one will disturb the peace of my home. Right. 
And he was very adamant about that. And I was young and dumb. I didn't quite figure that out for a while, you know. But after a while, I began to realize what he was saying was, is that he guarded the peace yes. of his home. Mm -hmm. That And he was a pastor. Right. So he had a lot of outside yeah. influences trying mm -hmm. to disturb. And he wanted to make sure that it was left there. It didn't come in here. Mm -hmm. Now, that takes that takes a cooperation between both yes. husband and wife. Yes. Because... Women are by far more emotional. Men are compartmentalized, you say. Men right. can turn it off a whole lot easier than women can. They'll right. drag it in, and all of a sudden you're living with somebody else's mess. Right. You don't want to do that. So, no. Mr. Counselor, help me out here. <laughs> well, I think that your father-in-law was wise in that we, ha you know, this is the other thing about being a man is that part of our job is to protect the environment of the family. Yeah. And I think the first step of that is for us to be present not distracted because if you're not present you won't notice what's eating it up mm -hmm. you'll be off chasing dragons or doing whatever you do so if I have if I have real um, intimacy with God in a sense that is satisfying me I'm way less distracted and I'm way less pulled by those other things and I see lots of men that get fully satisfied by what they do mm -hmm. quote unquote you know, there's no satisfaction in being successful. I mean, no, but they have an affair with their job. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. you know, and so, you know, women can do the same thing. They can, they can, they can try to get their fulfillment from raising ch children. They can get try to get their fulfillment from being the perfect wife. They can. There's lots of things that we can substitute that are seemingly good, but they're not. All right. So, what's the woman's role, the wife's role in guarding the outside influences mm -hmm. of the home? Because she may be a little closer to the kids' activities. Mm -hmm. Um, she may sense her husband's coming home. He's had a stressful mm -hmm. day. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't hit him with, um, you know, we well, don't have enough money this month. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, is there a role for the woman in this to guard the atmosphere of the home? Okay, so I would say it's real similar to a man in the sense that <clears throat> if I am moving into, um, as a man, my children, my wife, I'm, I'm initiating toward them. That's my role. The woman's job with the children is to be open, receiving, invitational, drawing them out, mm -hmm. right? And responding to them. Well, well, if I'm distracted by the PTA club or I'm distracted by, you know, the women's Bible study and, or I'm distracted by the gossip, how's I going to influence my family? Well, that's going to take away from it. So what happens is, and, and this may seem simplistic, but I really believe it to be true. The way I love my family the best is by having an intimacy with God that is sustaining. That becomes my first priority, which then diminishes the pull on all those other things. I know a lot of women who are really great moms for a selfish reason. Because mm -hmm. they're trying to get their own satisfaction. They're trying to be a good mom. They're trying to, you know, fulf be fulfilled in being a good parent. Well, there's no fulfillment in that. I mean, every kid that's born is a sinner. Well, there is to a point. There is. But I mean, you want to be successful as a mom. Yes, but it's not going to bring satisfaction to your soul. Mm -hmm. It's a distraction. So what I want you to have is soul satisfaction from God, which then empowers you to move into the family in a way that's powerful, rather than, rather than you moving into the family to get. Okay. What would you say to the pastor? Yes. Let's talk... Uh, Get a little personal here for a okay. moment. Okay, what do you say to the pastor? I mean, this poor gal and this poor guy. Yeah, they're trying to retain their own relationship yeah. Yeah. and manage everybody else's life. <clears throat> right. Somewhat you. I mean, what yeah. do you do? What do you and Catherine do to make mm -hmm. sure that you don't bring into the house all the counseling sessions you had throughout the day? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, <clears throat> I have um, on my calendar one of the days of the week mm -hmm. uh, from eight in the morning till one uh, in the afternoon. Uh, do not get a divorce time. <laughs> That's actually on the. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, I am, I am in need of focusing my mind, my attention, my efforts on who she is and what's going on. And as a person who has a lot of demands on me, a lot of people want my time. Mm -hmm. I have to. My my job is to protect that so that nothing interferes with her. She has priority. And what that says to her by me showing up and nothing, look, my assistant, nothing gets in that time. And it's just like ironclad. I, I don't care if, you know, you go to the hospital. I'm not doing it. it. Nothing is more important than that time that's carved out. What's that say to my wife? 
You're important. You're the priority, mm -hmm. right? If I let things eat that up, it's saying something very, very uh, uh, real. I also have one day of the week that is a Sabbath, because, and that's just really recent, because I've worked for six and a half, seven days a week for years, which is a tragedy. It's my sin. Mm -hmm. um, and so my, <laughs> my men basically beat me about the head and neck long enough to help me see that the damage I was doing to myself and to my family by not taking that time. So now I have a day where it's just, there's nothing on there. Mm -hmm. It's a full day off. So that's also saying something to her, that I'm not so consumed with helping everyone else that I'm going to just spin myself into the ground, which is a temptation for me. Mm -hmm. So what happens then is that I make the time to have relationships. So then when we get together, we, it's a various things. We can, we can talk, but here's the thing. I've heard Catherine say this multiple times. What I do know is that I got that time. So if I need to tell you something on Tuesday, I might jot it down because we might not have time between the kids and this and that and the other and youth group and mm. basketball, whatever. But come Thursday, we'll have that time. So what that does is it provides an opportunity to deal with stuff rather than it stacking. All right. A uh, little time left if you want to join the conversation, 776-5368 is the local number or toll free, 1-800-373-5368. Patrick Doyle's with us. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paula and I work at the Dove TV. Every day we get letters and emails from people who've been encouraged, blessed, and challenged by the programs on the Dove TV. But we couldn't do it without you. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to bring inspiration and hope to our community by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or call us at 541-776-5368. Good. These are yeah. Christians. Okay, we are talking about marriage and in particular, the woman's role of the marriage. Now, folks, no way we can cover this in just one little segment here <laughs> in the session, but I think we are uh, giving you some little nuggets here to uh, help you with um, maybe mm -hmm. in your relationship. And uh, Patrick Doyle heads up Veritas Counseling. This is what he does. This is what he's called to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if some of this has kind of touched you deeply today and you want to carry it on a little further, um, your number now is? 622-6018. 622-6018, that's area code 541, 622-6018, the number to Veritas Counseling. Or you can call us now, remain anonymous, don't give us your name, we'll respect that. And the number here is 541-776-5368 or toll free, 1-800-373-5368. Um, I think, uh, you, you go back to the beginning, two mm -hmm. people fall in love, mm -hmm. they get married, yeah. and they're heading down life's highway. Mm -hmm. And boy, there's a lot thrown at them today. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. All kinds of things can come up, and why do bad things happen to good people? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's some things when I get to heaven, it might take me 60 million years to ask God some <laughs> questions, you know, but um, but they do happen. Life yes. happens, yes. as they say. Mm -hmm. And these things all pull on a marriage. What can you say to the husband and wife today? You know there's an elephant in the room, mm -hmm. and you just don't know how to approach it. Mm -hmm. She shut down. She's not opening and inviting. Yep. She's yep. shut down. Right. He's trying or he's now becoming embittered. He's shut down. Yep. They don't want that in their heart. Right. They don't want that. Right. They do love each other. Right. There is an issue here mm -hmm. and we're dancing around this mm -hmm. elephant. How do we shoot it and kill it and get it out of okay, the room? Okay, so you know? in my estimation, it always works faster and better if the man takes initiative. Okay. If he's unable, the woman can take initiative. I think that's sort of out of her role. It's really our role to initiate. So if there's issue, if a man will, here's one of the things I suggest. Look, all kinds of things are spinning in your head. All kinds of things are spinning in your heart. You're, you're not sure, is this the truth? Is that the truth? Or is my strong feeling about this accurate? Is it that really because? There's all these questions and there's not a lot of, stabi a lot of stability. So I often suggest that guys go away. Take some time away. And ask God. Say, God, I don't know. I'm crazy. I, I feel. I think this. I think that. What about this? How come this? And get it all on the table with Him. Say, here it is, and no editing. 
<laughs> Let it go. Yeah. Say it whatever, how it needs to come out. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Because the other thing that will happen is you're honest with God and he doesn't slap you down. Mm-hmm. What it will do is inspire your trust with him. Okay. I don't tell people the honest truth, the unadulterated truth. I don't tell people I don't trust that stuff. So when I go to God and I say it as it really is, mm-hmm. what it is is it's, 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 it's expressing trust. And when he, when he loves on you instead of knocking you out, it'll inspire your trust and it'll build your intimacy with him, which is a good thing. So you go there and you, the, and you get some conviction, right? Then come back and I suggest that you write it down and you read it to your spouse. Here's what I believe God has shown me about what's wrong with me, how I've harmed the marriage. This is the thing I tell people to do. You go away and you ask God, what have I done to harm this person? What have I done to harm the marriage? You don't go there asking God what to do about them. Mm -hmm. It's not your issue. You You can't fix that. You can't make them do anything. So if you come and you have confession, which is accompanied by brokenness, I've rarely met a woman that doesn't respond to that. All right, I, I want to just nip one little thing here. Uh, it's possible. It is. The woman's wrong. It is. All right, so. The, but it doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't undo the need for you to deal with your sin. No, I understand that. Right. All right, but it's possible. I mean, when it comes to confession, yeah. it, the same responsibility is on her as it, it is on that's him. That's exactly right. But okay. if we lead, yeah. what, I'm, what I'm saying is I believe that we'll, we'll okay, so the way we're going to deal with our marital issues, honey, yeah. if I'm leading, is we're going to confess them. We're going to deal with them in a way that's that's going to move us forward. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm not doing it to get you to do it. I'm doing it because it's what I need to do, and I'm going to pray for God to bring you to a place of conviction. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to try to make it happen. See, and that's where that manipulation thing, that, that control thing starts to diminish because I'm trusting God to deal with that person, which I don't want to do because I want it now. <laughs> and God's on that whole like eternal time scale. He's, yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't have my time frame in mind. Well, what a thought. <laughs> I think that's probably one of the greatest obstacles today is impatience yeah. on both sides. I mean, we live in this click everything yep, yep. happens moment mm-hmm. you know and uh sometimes i've always heard that the three answers to prayer yes no and wait uh-huh. the wait one's kind of tough uh-huh. now it could go either way but it he does say wait yeah. i've had that it was right cool it cool your jets right have you ever felt oh, that oh absolutely okay yeah, and so you know um there are things in my marriage that i i have prayed for for years and why he doesn't answer it? I mean, it seems pretty obvious to me he should answer it now. <laughs> well, and then, but you're Pat. <laughs> exactly. He, he being God is not really impressed with my time frame. And so it, it, then what it does is it works on me. And see, this is the thing that I'm, I'm trying to get across is that, look, I see a lot of marriages where each person is trying to fix the other. Not going to work. Mm-hmm. I say you back up. And you ask God what you're doing. And now listen, here's the thing. If you back up and you start dealing with your sin, what I, what I hear people say is, well, yeah, but what about, yeah, but what about, yeah, but what, but, yeah, but, you know. And I'm like, that's going to be where you trust God. Now, here's what happens. I've seen this before. Let's say that God does. You wait, you deal with your sin, and you don't try to manipulate that person into dealing with theirs. And then God convicts them and brings them to you. Mm-hmm. What at that moment happens? Yeah. We and, have real intimacy. And you are prepared to handle it correctly. Yes, right. because in the waiting, you're developed. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, and I think that you bring up a good point, Perry. We live in a world that wants everything to be fixed. Right. Well, I, 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 this isn't popular, but I've just seen it many times, that the difficulty is part of how God reveals himself. He's in the difficulty. Mm-hmm. He's not absent from it. He's not there going, well, when you guys get it together, I'll get involved. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm, I'm in the waiting. I'm here. I'm helping. I'm working. I want you to look at me, not them. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, because see, you know, from my experience, and it hasn't always been this way, but I trust who God is. I trust his character. My wife, on the other hand, She's not trustworthy all the time. She can have a reaction. She can be selfish. She can be manipulative, just like I can. She can't trust me in the same way because I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. The only one in this relationship that's not is God. Mm -hmm. And so when he becomes the focal point, and my goal of the marriage is not to be content or not to be happy 
or not to be trouble free, but my goal is to be obedient to what he's telling me, that, that changes a lot of my internal instincts. It changes a lot of my desires. Okay, so, but that's going to require some spiritual help. So, who can you talk to about what your convictions are? Who can, can you, can you, because I really think if you can't tell your spouse right away, and sometimes that's the case, sometimes the trust isn't there when you have the conviction. You got to go check that with somebody else that you trust. Here's what I thought I heard the Lord say to me about my behavior. What do you think? Oh, yeah, that's true. I see that. No, okay. So, you get some legitimacy. Then it's a timing thing. Mm -hmm. God, when, when do I say it? But here's what I want to say. When you do have that, conf that, that, that confession, I really encourage you to write it down. Okay? Because generally, these are hot button issues in a marriage. Mm -hmm. So all it takes is an eye movement, uh, mm -hmm. a, a certain infre inflection of the voice, a body movement, a certain subject, and pew, mm -hmm. we're off down the road to that looping argument that we've had a hundred times over mm -hmm. the same thing. So. When you have a confession, you just say to the person, I'm going to read this to you, and I don't want you to respond. In fact, I want you to really respond to me in writing. Okay? Mm -hmm. One thing that happens is when I write it down, I get clear about what I'm saying. Okay? Uh, I also, when I write it down, I don't have to be present with you when I write it. So when, I, when you say it to somebody, you have to be present. So I can go into my closet, have all the emotion I want, mm -hmm. and edit and then come to you. So it, it spares a lot of the emotional damage. The other thing is, is I have a record of what I said. And it's no more he said, she said. Well, wait a minute. No, right here is what I said. I didn't say that. It's right here. Mm -hmm. So it gets permanent. Mm -hmm. So in conversations, particularly about things that are difficult or, or painful, there's a lot of spinning. There's a lot of he said, she said, or there's a lot of interpreting, right? So when it's written, we do away with a lot of that stuff. The other thing is that when it's written, it's permanent. So I can go, I can, I can pull it back out in two days and go, yeah, that's still true. Um, and so can the person that I give it to. They can revisit it without anybody knowing. So many times what happens is they read the confession and they, they're not ready for it. And then they go away and a couple days later they, re, they pull it out and they read it and they're in the privacy of their own place and they can have that conviction and then come forward. The other thing I would say is that when you make a confrontation, try not to have an expectation of everything working out. Yeah, because you may just be beginning the process. Right. Right. It, if if it all works out great and everybody repents and it's a big you know woohoo, awesome, praise the Lord. But don't expect that. And I think a lot of times what people do is they go through the work of all that and they're like, okay, this is going to work, and they go there and the person's like, whatever, mm -hmm. because the person's not ready to go there. That doesn't change the fact that what you did was effective. All right, one last question. We're going to run out of time here quickly. What can you say to the woman who thinks she's nurturing, but the man thinks she's nagging? Mm -hmm. Ask for feedback. How do I affect you, honey? Do you feel pushed away? Do you feel nagged at? Do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel bothered? How do you feel about the way I interact with you? Whoa. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so one, one of the things that I did when I was away at the conference is that I was challenged by uh, Larry uh, about some things. And so I texted 15 people to include my wife and children, and I asked the same question. How do I affect you as a person? Hmm. And the feedback I got was very good. It was helpful to me to understand how I'm affecting people and some things I need to change. It was also helpful in confirming some things that God was doing in me. So asking for feedback is never a bad idea. All right. Uh, Patrick Doyle, Veritas Counseling, 622-6018 is the phone number there in uh, Jacksonville. Yep. 541-622-6018. And uh, call if you'd like to make an appointment to see him privately. And uh, next time we come back, I don't know what your topic is, but I'm sure it'll be interesting. <laughs> By the way, this will be up on the Dove archives, both at the website and on Roku a little bit later on. If you want to watch this again or maybe share it with your spouse, <laughs> it'll be there for we you. We aim okay? to please. <laughs> okay. Hopefully we'll see you next week. You'll be around to enjoy another show. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim and I work at the Dove TV. Every weekday between 6 and 8 a.m., our award-winning news and sports team bring you the best morning show around. It's live, it's honest, and it's a whole lot of fun. And you help make it happen. 
Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to air local programs that share your voice by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us.